The automotive ignition coil is a remarkable invention. From your everyday driver to the more beautiful varieties, they're in pretty much every car. For example, this coil is from a Honda. Little cutie. Give it 15 volts and it gives you back 15,000. Oh, how nice. But these two characters, well, they pair up to do so much more than that. Ignition coils will always hold a special place in my little plasma-based heart, but running them reliably can be a bit tricky. Luckily, the infamous, and I do mean infamous, 555 driver does the job. It allows you to create some wicked sparks at various frequencies. It also allows for audio input, meaning you can play music through the sparks. <laughs> so that's why I've created a Bluetooth-enabled, audio-modulated dual ignition coil driver. Or Beam Dick for short. Besides producing over 60,000 volts, it can play Bluetooth audio from your phone and convert Bluetooth into radio. Physics, baby. This video is proudly sponsored by Truebill. The heart of this entire build is this 555 driver circuit. It accepts 12 to 18 volts DC and it pulses that power out to ignition coils in a square wave format at a frequency of about 1 to 10 kilohertz, which is perfect for driving ignition coils, and the potentiometers tune the performance. I attempted a primitive version of this circuit a couple of years ago. When it wasn't busy blowing up, it did overclock the crap out of a Subaru coil, making some gorgeous arcs, and some of you might remember that video. Funny thing, I spent almost no time making it, yet it exploded. Let's go, Plasma fam! So I plan to dig a little bit deeper by adding a few upgrades. First, I'm not a schmuck, so I added a healthy dose of acrylic. Mostly because it sits right about here on my nutrition pyramid. Second, 555 chips which drive inductive loads tend to blow themselves up. To prevent that, I'm adding a resistor, diode, and capacitor to act as a snubber circuit. Lastly, I'm giving the antiquated circuit a modern upgrade, Bluetooth, which is singular for blue teeth. Okay, the perfectionist in me, uh, <laughs> just can't. Let's do this. The circuit is wired identical to this schematic. The 5 volt regulator provides power to Bluetooth, and this accepts Bluetooth audio. Capping it off, I added banana plugs for the input and the frequency modulated output. The board and the circuit could be more compact, but I actually need it to be a specific length, which uh, it, it'll make more sense when I talk about the Bluetooth edition later. And the operation's pretty simple. The 555 chip sends an adjustable square wave signal to this transistor, turning the power on and off to the ignition coils. That's it. As I do, I went shopping at my favorite place. PLASMA PLASTICS! In search of my next sacrifice to the acrylic gods. Oh, hello there. I love working with acrylic, but... Sometimes it's like a pissed off gremlin. You can't feed it after midnight, you can't get it wet, you can't get it dusty, you can't heat treat it, you can't drill too fast, you can't give it too much glue. <laughs> I had to rebuild that stand multiple times. I spent way too long building the world's simplest stand right now. What's up, what are you up to tonight? Uh, just some acrylic work. Dude, you've been doing that for a while, what's going on? But here's the final form. Circuit board can be raised if needed and the potentiometers will be mounted on the front. So this is the part I've always wondered about. You know, exactly how hard is it to integrate a Bluetooth board? Well, after a bit of searching, I found it's really not that hard. You can buy Bluetooth receivers that have standard audio jacks. And I looked for the most compact package and found a great option. It had solid P factor, plasma factor. I lifted the circuit further and it slid right into the base. Perfect fit, honestly. This left very little room for the power and audio wires, which, hey, was a fun challenge to overcome. The Bluetooth required 5 volts, so I spliced the power cord into a 5 volt regulator and spliced the audio cable into pin 5 of the IC chip. In the end, it turned out great. All in one, totally compact, single and ready to mingle. I found this beauty of an ignition coil at a junkyard about a decade ago, and I plan to build a dual coil power source. So I need to find a twin. 
That meant taking a drive to my local wrecking yard in weather that, well, <laughs> I live in Seattle. But if you know where to look, places like this are full of treasure. Welcome to Seattle. Uh, we call this Seattle sunshine. After a bit of searching, I was directed to a pile of alternators and ignition coils, and there were literally thousands of them, so I kind of just went on autopilot, spaced out, and dreamed of you guys subscribing. Then this happened. This truck need to go up, or what? what are we waiting for? The exact one that I needed, sitting in the rain for God knows how long. So I just poured through 100 cars, a whole junkyard, to find this single individual part. Like, dude, don't ever say I don't do anything for you guys, okay? Now, ignition coils often only have three terminals. A positive in, a negative in, and a high voltage out. The secondary coil is connected to the primary, so the low voltage ground is also the high voltage ground. However, I wired these dual coils in what's called anti-parallel configuration. Power is provided to both coils at the same time, but one is connected backwards. Doing so provides double the voltage out with pretty minimal wiring. It's a solid setup. The circuit pulls a fair amount of current, and driving dual ignition coils, ooh, does it make some juicy, juicy arcs. Uh, this, hands down, is my favorite project that I've ever done for the channel, and you're going to see why. That's what I'm talking about. This is about 9 kilohertz, right about there. And with a bit more juice, say 25 volts at 3 amps, this beast just comes alive. With it working, I want to know, can I feed it an audio signal from Bluetooth, and what is that going to sound like? First, I read all my comments so I know what you're going to ask. How much is my electricity bill, and how much does running a channel like this cost? Well, Truebill can help me answer that. Truebill is an all-in-one personal finance app which basically helps you save money by categorizing all of your expenses. It allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, monitor your credit score, build savings, and pretty much just understand where every single penny is going, which apparently mine all goes to Home Depot. They reached out to me a couple of months ago. Gotta say I love the product so far because it helped me to realize that, guess what, I had a couple of subscriptions that I wasn't using that were just burning money. So the app helped me cancel those with just the push of a button. It's also helped me be more efficient with my budgets because it automatically monitors my spending in every single category, and it sends these friendly notifications when you've exceeded a threshold that you previously set so that you can know it's time to basically put down that credit card. To help you negotiate bills down in price, all you have to do is upload a photo of your bill and then tap a single button. This year, I'm quitting my job to focus on full-time video production, so knowing where every single dollar spent and where my finances are going is going to be super crucial, and that's why sponsors like this support my channel on so many levels. It's a super cool product. So if you'd like to try it out for free, head to truebill.com slash plasma channel or click the link in the description down below. The first attempt was exciting. I made a makeshift audio connection, synced the Bluetooth, fed it some crappy Mario. Results were rough. Let's do this, baby. Oh! <laughs> God, that sucks. What a sound. Oh, sorry. Could you hear the 8-bit Mario music hidden amongst the shriek of a thousand banshees? Hey, it was working. It, it was working. I swept the whole frequency range trying to get rid of that background pitch, and the music improved. I quickly realized that background pitch was there to stay, regardless of what master pitch you set the circuit to, but it did provide the highest audio quality at the higher frequencies that the circuit could provide, which makes sense, because higher frequencies means more sparks per second, therefore finer audio detail. And here's it playing the highest pitch. Music is clearer, you'll notice, but way quieter. I 
actually hear the music that time. Are you filming? No. Glare! So the reason it's quieter is because ignition coils are not designed to be ran at high frequencies. Up at this higher frequency range, their iron cores heat up from eddy currents, which basically wastes energy. This leads to lower voltages and smaller arcs. So while music's higher quality, it gets really quiet. This is the reason why flybacks are usually used for audio modulating sparks. Their ferrite cores are less lossy and can handle super high frequencies above our audible range. So music through flyback transformers tends to be clearer and you won't hear that annoying background pitch when playing music. That's probably why most people don't try to audio modulate ignition coils. But I kind of have a steamy love affair with these little guys, so hey, tonight is for everybody. There's something I really want to try with this. Spark apps can be used to create radio waves, and I essentially just made an audio modulated spark app. So does that mean I can use this to create audio modulated radio? Or in other words, can I turn it into a radio station? I figured the only thing missing was a transmitting antenna. So I attached that to the output and turned everything on. actually working. Five points for Gryffindor, you know what I'm saying? This is a project that I've honestly been wanting to tackle for years, so I'm over the moon in terms of how the results turned out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below if you have any video suggestions or any questions about the build. Also, you can follow my work on Instagram for updates between videos or Patreon to know about my projects before anybody else. Also, I'd like to take note that since I'm going full-time video production in a couple of months, that's only been made possible by my awesome Patreons, sponsors like Truebill, and viewers like yourself. So, thank you so much for watching, and you stay classy.